My mom's the only one with a job in the family, and she makes like less than what her job is. Like she's a nurse too, and she used to make eighty thousand dollars like every year, but she lost her job. Like she quit, so now she makes like twenty five thousand a year. Twenty five thousand a year? Yeah. In New York? In New York. In yeah. New York? Twenty five thousand dollars a year in New York? This is barely covering rent. It's t it's two thousand dollars a month. What makes you poor? What brought you up here? What led you to say, I probably belong up here? Okay, so like, I guess I like always kind of knew that I was like lower income. Wait, talk right, talk Sorry. really loud. So Sorry. I guess like I always knew that I was like lower income than most people. And like, I guess like I knew that since like elementary school, but it didn't like hit me until my first week of college when like I went to the student aid office and like the lady who was like sorting out my student aid, she like commented on the fact that I have the Pell Grant and she was like, only the lowest of income families get that, and you have the highest amount for it. And I was like, oh, fuck. Hey, you know what's crazy? <clears throat> People talk about in America the lack of equality or the discrimination we face as African Americans. And there is some truth in that. But when you want to talk about inequality in the country, the biggest inequality you can have is wealth. Because when you talk about something that really changes your life, it's money. And people try to act like it's not true, but it is. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because when she's talking about her struggles, talking about what it's like to be lower class, talking about what it's like to go into the financial aid office, and all students have that fear or have that worry about going into the financial aid office. But one worry I've never had was that. Ever. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I've never had to worry about going to the financial aid office. And honestly, as a college student, I don't even know what a Pell Grant is. I don't know what it is. And that's the only reason I'm going on this long spill, because I'm hearing this young white woman talking about how she went into the financial aid. They talk about Pell Grant is, the, is for lower income. She has the largest amount, meaning her family's in the depths of the economic barriers in America. And I have no idea what a Pell Grant is. And I'm... I'm I am deep in college. I don't know what that is. So what do your parents do? My dad doesn't work, and my mom works in an office that sells office furniture. Uh-huh. So, so do you have siblings? Yeah, I have two older siblings. Two older siblings? Do they contribute to the family income? No. Uh-huh. All right. Um, I don't know. I kind of always knew I was poor. <laughs> um, I've always lived in my grandma's basement, like with my mom. My mom was a single mom. Wait, you, live, you grew up in your grandmother's basement? Yeah, like uh -huh. it's like kind of nice. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, my mom made like, she was, I don't know. My mom passed away last year, so now I'm like independent and live off of loans. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so can I, do you have a car? Uh, yeah, it's my mom's. How, what year is it? A 2010. 2010? Yeah. All right, so you're... Um, do you have a credit 13 card? years ago. No. <laughs> uh-huh. And Mandy, do you have a car? Nope. Do you have credit cards? I have a debit card. A debit card? Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of always knew I was poor. So um, my parents, like, when I was up to, like, age six, we were living in an apartment. And then my parents separated for, like, about two years. And my mom and I, we moved into this house. And we rented half of it. So we're still living there too. And my mom's the only one with a job in the family. And she makes like less than what her job is. Like she's a nurse too. And she used to make $80,000 like every year, but she lost her job, like she quit. So now she makes um, like 25,000 a year. 25,000 a year? Yeah. In New York? In New York, In yeah. New York? Because she works at a rehab place before she used to work at a... $25,000 a year in New York? I don't even think... What? How much is that a month, bro? 25000 I hope that's... I hope that's after taxes. This is barely covering rent. It's, it's $2,000 a month in New York. Dang! Dang! hospital like 
one of the popular hospitals in our town. Dude, so 25,000 a year, just to put the Ashley, Ashley, right? Yeah. To put that in perspective, in Johnstown, 25,000 a year would be like 75,000 yeah. in Johnstown. Okay, joyful. How about you? I live in the projects. I knew I was like lower class. Um, when you say projects, like t public tell housing, people like what that means. Public it's housing, like, section eight. It's like a compound, like the, I'm, I'm gonna say like a ghetto or something. Like all the houses look the same. They're all like connected. We got like paths. It's like a little neighborhood. Government owned housing. If y'all don't know what the projects is, I'm sure a few of y'all know what the projects is. It's government owned housing. It means the government owns all the houses. It's section eight. You don't own anything. You're in government assisted living. Hey y'all, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. It's and actually very nice looking for. And do you have a car? No, I'm getting a car though with my refund checks. Do you, do you, hang on now. No, hang on, dude, hold, hold tight. Yo, that actually might be a bad idea, so hold tight, right? Because what do you know about a car? What do you know about the costs of a car? It's expensive. And, uh, like, everything that goes I'm, into it, dude. I'm going to get a, I'm not getting like a, like an expensive car. I'm getting like one off a lot, like in a parking lot, maybe like 3,000. Does, 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 do, does, who do you live with? I live with my mom. Just your mom? And I have two siblings and younger, a nephew. older, older. Do they have cars? My brother has a car, but his just got repoed. So they got repoed. Repo people. Where's Where's your mom work? She's not working right now. She's actually in a, um, a rehabilitation because she was like in and out the hospital for the last two years for a seizure. So she was a drug and alcohol counselor, um, but yeah, she hasn't been working. She just started getting social security. So she. Had Here's the thing. Here's a lesson I want people to get from. Forget the video. This is a lesson I want people to get from my channel. Um, I actually do a lot of music reactions, if y'all don't know. And a lot of the stuff I reacted to on, on the music terms, it wasn't the stereotypical black songs or the, you know, the black music. But I react to like a lot of country songs or a lot of, um, even a lot of hip hop songs that I've never heard before from bands such as Linkin Park and, and stuff like that. And when I was doing that, it opened up a new world for me. Um, I met a lot of people that I wouldn't have met if I was to react to like music from the stereotypical black culture. And something that it showed me is that we're all the same. Like it showed me that we're all the same. The fans who like um, country music or who like rock music are just as aggressive, <laughs> are just as crazy as the fans who like Jay-Z or who like Drake or who like J. Cole or who like rap, rap music. Y'all are just as insane. And the reason I'm using that analogy is because this is kind of what this is telling me now. You have four people on the stage. Two white women, one black woman, and I think this young woman, I don't know her ethnicity, um, on the side with the glasses. Well, they're both high glasses. but And they're all broke. All of them. They may be a different type of broke, live in different parts of the country, different areas, but they're all broke. They all have money issues. But here we are comparing, oh, I'm black, so I have more struggles than you. Oh, no, I'm white, so I have white guilt. And you don't know what is dumb. We all have issues. We're all the same. And this is what I want people to realize when they watch my channel. That's why I'm extremely objective, because you have issues the same way I have issues. Luckily, I don't have these type of issues, but... We all have issues, man. We're all equal, man. No cap. He has seizure disorders. Yeah. And so she. Mm -hmm. And do you, does your family have a car? Uh, we only have one car. Yeah? It's a 2001 car. Wow. Yeah. So what's the hardest? Let me, let me just. Um, what do you think people misunderstand most about people in your class, in your social class? What do you like when you listen to the news or you listen to talking heads talking about things like what do they misunderstand the most like living in the projects living you know except living in Johnstown living, you know anybody can speak yeah well I think they misunderstand the fact that we still have jobs we you know the rent has to get paid one way or the other mm -hmm. people what do you think, think that you're just like lazy or what do you think people where do you think people think you get your money like the government you know welfare and all of that uh-huh. I'm not even on welfare, so. Uh-huh. Somebody else, what do you think people misunderstand most? Um, 
I live in like a pretty wealthy town. Like there's several parts of like our town that a lot of people have money. Most people are like doctors or lawyers or whatever. So I guess people misunderstand like where I live, it's an average size house. But since we rent half of it, people just assume like, oh, my family makes a lot of money. So like when I tell them like, oh, my mom just rents the half, they get like a little shocked and surprised. So that some, so what you see and what we see is like, is there are these social classes? They're not all completely segregated. So rich people and poor people and middle class people oftentimes are living together, and they can look like I can look at you and look at the four of you and be like, okay, well you look just kind of like the four people who were up here the other day, although you don't, but you do. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you? What would you say? Um, I don't think it's like the parents' fault at all, but I think that a lot of people look at the kids differently too, and like we didn't choose who we were raised by and like I don't know we didn't choose what class we were in I guess so like I don't know I've worked since I was like 14 and I thought that was normal and I, where'd you work I worked at a farm <laughs> until I was 16 and then I worked at the mall so and this is why this is why when people come to me and they're like this is why I'm not really able to identify with the victim mindset you know, I'm a black man in America. I'm supposed to be a victim. That's what people say. I'm supposed to be a victim. I'm supposed to be oppressed. But I, I refuse to say it. <laughs> I refuse to say it because I am not. Here you have a young Caucasian woman, grew up in straight poverty, was working since she was 14. I'm not gonna lie, when I was 14, I was going on AAU basketball trips. I was A job wasn't even in the forefront of my mind at all it never even crossed my mind to work it was a foreign it was a foreign subject to me to get it to get a job at 14 it literally wasn't even in my realm of reality my life like in terms of financial or terms of like having to work having to struggle not knowing when a meal is coming that was not my life it wasn't but here you have a young white woman if you listen to the media or you listen to society, you would never even know that the people like this are real. And y'all like, you didn't know they're real? No! You're told that white people just don't struggle. That they just have the perfect life. That, they, that they're that they the ones oppressing other races. So while I'm living in a big house or I'm at basketball tournaments getting whatever shoe, bas new basketball shoe comes out that year. She's at work. Having to pay half her mother's rent or whatever, and I'm playing basketball. Like, oh yeah, they're oppressing. Like, bruh, I refuse to identify with that any longer. I'm sorry. Johnstown Mall. Yep. <laughs> so you buy? Do you buy your own clothes? Did you buy your own school clothes and all yeah. that kind of stuff? Yeah. Did you? Do you and like, if you have a phone, you you pay for your own phone. Yeah. So when you were living in your grandmother's basement, you were responsible for all those things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, if I get anything. Like, my mom's never bought me anything, but if my grandma ever buys me anything, it's, like, a present. Like, for, like, a special occasion. Like, I don't just get stuff for fun. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You don't just get some random. Mandy, how about you? What, what do you, what, hey, do you pay, you pay all your bills? I do. Like, wh where do you work now? I work, well, I've worked since I was 16, but, like, right now I work at Pollock, and I hate it, but it's money. How many hours a week? Uh, the, my maximum is 20, and I hit that every week. Yeah. And so your phone and, like, everything is you. Yeah, I pay for my phone. I pay for school. I pay for my apartment. Like, I hate, like, asking my parents for money, and I never do. So, like, I don't ask them to pay my tuition. Uh-huh. So it's similar to what, um, I forget who, who it was who said the same thing. Like, the pers who's the Persian woman? Who's... Yeah, so you were saying the same thing about your parents. Like, you don't want to ask them for money, being, like, the good child. So it's a similar kind of thing. It's very, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what, so what are, like, some of the positive things about being in your, so, in your social class? Like, what's something positive? Oh, I play the I'm poor card all the time, so I never pay for anything if I don't have to. You mean, like, when you're with friends and stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's smart. People just Remember buy stuff that. for me, and I love yeah. it. Yeah. Somebody, what else, something else? Do you have anything? Like, what's something positive, right? Because we think about poverty, and we think, oh, my God, this is terrible. And like. Well, I know I live in the projects, but it's, like, it's really like a community. 
Like we had block parties, you know, I think, honestly, I think like the hood, you know, the ghetto, the projects, we are the only people that have like community like built things. We clean up the neighborhood together. So I think it's, it's not as bad as it, it's looked at. Is often looked at. Yeah. Uh huh. So there's a community side to it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I guess like having friends that like their families make above average is pretty cool to like hang out with them because one of my friends have like has this huge house and I used to like go there all the time and like not spend that much time in my house. Mm hmm. How about how about something else? Like but this is yeah, making me sad, bro. <laughs> she said. She said a benefit of growing up in poverty was going to one of her friend's houses who didn't grow up in poverty. That's cool. Um, yeah. What about, what's something positive that like, you've gotten? I don't know, like it was always just me and my mom and I felt like we were really close because of it. Like, I don't know, I don't, like, <laughs> I never like had actual dinners whenever my mom was working and stuff, so like, I don't know, like, we like always like I always used to pay for stuff too, and I think it made us like super close. And like, a lot of my family isn't in, in poverty, so like, a lot of my family helps me too, I guess. So like, I don't know, I could be poor. <laughs> so was it ever? I'm I really am at a loss for words, man. Sometimes I will watch a video and I know it's my job to say stuff to y'all or, you know, make sense of the video, but son, I'm at a loss. Anyways, I'll see you next time.